gentlemen, we are officially live. Hello everyone and welcome back to Producing Music. My name is Nan Weary and in this video, we're going to be building a future funk track in the style of Young Bay. Let's get right into it. I was inspired to create this track when I heard this sample in Cashmere's new pack. It sounds like this. And as soon as I heard it, it was, it was in 115 BPM. I just knew I had to build something with it. So I stretched it out to 128 and then I got started. So I usually like to work my drums and audio. When I'm producing, I just find it helps my workflow a little bit better. But for the sake of doing these track breakdowns, I like to do it in MIDI because it's a lot easier to show how to create the groove uh, and it's easier to teach that way. So I have here a new MIDI track, uh, this drum rack here. I'm just gonna duplicate this really fast and then start from scratch. This is what we're gonna be building today. So in this new lane, I'm just going to delete this and then create a new MIDI clip by doing Control Shift M. I'll solo this and we'll get to building the drums right now. So we have all of the usual suspects, the kick, body snare, high snare, hat, cowbell, that's a new one, crash, and open hat. So we're gonna start off in the style of four on the floor, just like any house beat would be. And you're gonna want a really punchy kick that'll cut through the mix for this kind of track. Then we have this body snare that goes on the two and the four and it's accompanied by a high snare that also goes on the two and the four. So very simple, very standard kick and snare pattern. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I always like to adjust my snares a little bit. So I'm gonna move, actually, let me select all of them here. And then I'm gonna move my body snare a little bit off center with the kick. And then I'll use my high snare a little bit before to create that snap. Pretty standard stuff so far, but we're gonna create some new groove with the cowbell and the open hat. So let's add the hat next. Again, nothing super fancy. We're just gonna put it on the offbeat here, but instead of this fourth beat just being a, a closed hat, I'm gonna delete both of these and introduce the open hat, which will open before the next bar starts. Now to add some more groove to this beat, it already sounds pretty good, but we're gonna throw in a cowbell to create a little extra movement. We're gonna throw in one here, one here, and one here. So you get that, that little shuffle in between these hi-hats and the kick. And then just to create some variation, I duplicated it over, and I'm gonna drag this one to cover the hi-hat. And then I'll just off-center them a little bit, like that. So it just creates a little more movement, it has a little more variation throughout the drums. And then lastly, I have this crash that I'm gonna put on just in the first position here. Now there are a couple extra elements that aren't in this MIDI clip because they're much easier to do in audio. Firstly, I have this snare, this reverse snare that I have coming right before the second snare hit here on the four. And then last but not least, I have this shaker loop with quite a lot of important processing, actually. I'm gonna go through that really fast. I have it just playing the highs. And then what I like to do is add an auto pan with a pretty high amount and a, a medium to low rate so that the shaker loop just moves between your ears left and right, super wide in the mix. Again, I have a delay added so that it will be pushed to the back of, of the listener's field. Uh, and then I have it being compressed to the kick so it's side chain and doesn't get in the way of any of the other elements. So there you have the drums. Let's go work on the bass now. Now the electric bass slap that I'm using is from Ableton's standard library. If you go to instruments, then instrument rack, bass, and you scroll down a little bit, there's a, a preset called electric bass slap here. You'll notice the theory behind this bass line is that you have long fundamental groove notes on the bottom, which is I'll get rid of these for a second. It's just these, it almost acts as a sub bass. Now that just keeps the fundamental groove going. And then you have these accent notes up at the top, which are the parts of the slap bass that really hits. And that's what gives it the funk. 
if you show the theory behind the bass, you'll see that I you just, I had to listen to the cashmere sample and listen to where the root notes were, and it did this kind of thing. It had a very steady E as its as its fundamental, and then about halfway through the sample, it bumps up to A. So I just did the same thing, did the same fundamental groove, and then transposed it up. Uh, what is that? Five, five semitones, seven semitones, something like that. And uh, did the same pattern, except it sounds really nice with the sample. I'll play them together. As for the basis processing, I have a little bit of EQ to boost the sub uh, while limiting some of the high end. I'm saturating it a little bit with the a bit warmer preset from Ableton Saturator. And then for sidechain, I have this high-low split that I use a lot uh, that's broken up into 80 hertz for the low end and above 80 hertz for the high end. And why I like to do this is because I want different compression amounts based on the frequency spectrum of the bass. So what I mean by that is for the low end, I want a little more side chain because it's going to interfere with the kick more. But for the high end, I don't really want that much side chain because the high end doesn't really interfere with the kick. I still want it to be there and I still want it to have its punch. So I don't want it ducking whenever the kick hits. So you can see here I have the threshold for the high end set at negative 9. As for the low end, I have it negative 13. It's subtle, but it makes a big, it makes a big difference in the whole mix. Here's what the bass and drums sound like together. Now we've got one more element to cover, which is the effects, and really there's only one thing going on here. It's this cashmere sweep that sounds like this. Very, very simple, but also very important. And I'm doing something interesting here with the auto pan that I want to mention really quick. It's adding a bit of ear candy to the track. So I have automated here the rate, which is the speed that the auto pan moves back and forth from the left and the right, the speed that it pans back and forth. And so I have this, you can see here, swooping up as the drop approaches. And you can see the visual on this area down here, which is the phase of the auto pan. And you'll see that since it's swooping up, it's gonna start moving back and forth faster and faster and faster before it finally hits the impact where I turn the auto pan off and it returns back to the center. So it, it builds the listener up, builds the listener up, and as soon as the impact hits, it releases and all the pressure is gone. So see if you can hear that little difference. It adds a lot in the final mix. And then I also have some ocean waves playing for some ambience. And then I have this pre-drop vocal, which I've done a, a radio sort of effect to, uh, to make it fit in the mix better. I added some reverb and then did the radio EQ again. So it fits well in the mix. Sounds like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially live. All right, so that's it. Let's listen to the whole track. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.